The Jerome J. Lohr College of Engineering at South Dakota State University is built on a foundation of excellence. Students, faculty, staff, and alumni can trace the mission and goals of the college directly to the beginning of our nation and to our very first president, who called for engineering education to be a fundamental building block for America. The college has remained true to the land-grant goal of providing a practical education in what once were called the mechanical arts. While actively embracing technology, innovation, and change, seeking solutions to our world's most challenging problems. Rigorous academic programs, relevant research and scholarship, outstanding facilities, strong engagement with industry, and talented faculty and students are the foundation for the continuing success of the Jerome J. Lohr College of Engineering. Tonight, we will recognize our distinguished professionals in our celebration of the 2021 Jerome J. Lohr College of Engineering Awards Banquet. Adolf Fafar, a 1959 graduate of the Electrical Engineering Program, retired from MITRE Corp. after a career as a ground and aviation electronics engineer. We honor him tonight as the 143rd person to be initiated as a distinguished engineer since Dean Junis O. Story created the award at South Dakota State University in 1977. FAFAR worked full-time with the federally funded research firm from 1966 to 2000 and became the international expert on a synchronous military communication system now used in 48 countries. He was born on March 4, 1937 in Tabor as the oldest of nine children of Bill and Helen Fafar. In those pre-television days, his dad opened a theater. The projectionist, a few years older than Adolf, planned to become an electrical engineer. Fafar decided he would too. Fafar, who played six-man football at Tabor High School, planned to pick up pre-engineering classes at nearby Southern State and then go to the School of Mines. But in the summer after his 1955 graduation from Tabor High, legendary South Dakota State football coach Ralph Gian called the Fafar house and asked Adolph if he would like a scholarship to play football at State. It took me only a few seconds to accept the offer, said Fafar. With limited math in Tabor, he had to complete his high school math during the first quarter of college to get into the College of Engineering. He still remembers his schedule. 7 a.m., analytical geometry. 8 a.m., third semester algebra. One hour off, chemistry, lunch, English, and then football. 18 or 19 quarter credits per quarter. On the gridiron, the 6'2", 195-pound Fafar played end. He also worked as a carpenter, as the doorman at the downtown theater, and the projectionist for State Photo on campus. He spent four years in ROTC and graduated in December 1959 with a degree in electrical engineering and a commission in the U.S. Air Force. His first military assignment was in California as the radar maintenance officer. After 29 months, he was assigned to the division headquarters in California to develop operational policy for the new frequency diversity radar. After one year, he was selected to obtain a master's degree from Stanford University. While there, he developed type 1 diabetes and received a medical military discharge. He remained at Stanford, earning a master's in electrical engineering, he then received a National Science Foundation Fellowship to earn Stanford's equivalent of a doctorate in electrical engineering. As he was finishing his Stanford schooling, MITRE Corp set up interviews there. I thought I would work there a few years and see what happened. I worked there the rest of my life, Fafar said. He worked applied research and system testing of several radio wave propagation systems. For 13 years, he was the MITRE site leader responsible for testing the new digital, tactical, synchronous Link 16 communications system. Link 16 is a complicated and encrypted system that allows communication between military platforms. When I got involved, there was only the Air Force and the Navy using it. Today, there are 48 countries using it. 
By 2010, Link 16 had become so widespread that international user conferences were held, and Fafar served as a side session co-chair for several years. Fafar officially retired in 2018 after serving MITRE for 34 years as a full-time employee and 18 years as an Air Force consultant. Co-workers honored him in a retirement celebration in which they good-naturedly tagged him as Spock. In retirement, Fafar settled in Oro Valley, Arizona, where he continued to play tennis, a sport he took up after retiring from basketball at age 40. While still living in Florida, he was able to play in a pro-am tournament with Australian professionals Kerry Reed and Ken Rosewall. Recently, he created the Bill and Helen Fafar Endowment, which provides four $1,000 renewable scholarships to students of any major, with preference given to Bonham and Yankton County students. That was my thank you to the university, Fafar said. I hope that this scholarship will help some high school students pursue their unexpected, fruitful careers.